Let your glory fill this place, oh God. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place. As we lift our voices tonight, let your glory flood this place. Let your glory fill the rooms, the households of everyone that will be watching on tonight, oh God. Let your glory fill the rooms, oh God. Every single household, every nook and cranny. Let your glory fill this place, oh God. We praise you tonight. We lift our hands and we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been good to us, oh God. You've been good to us. And we say thank you. We thank you for another opportunity to serve. We thank you for another opportunity to enter into this place to worship your name, oh God. Receive our worship. Receive our worship. Receive our worship. We welcome you into the sanctuary of the Vanderbilt Park United Methodist Church on this, our third and final night of our spring revival. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. We've made it to the third night. God has blessed us our first night. Dr. Brown blessed us with it ends today. Last night, Brother Ralph West blessed us with a doxological palindrome, and we are waiting, anticipating a great word from the Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglas Haynes III on tonight. Set your expectations high for God to move in this place. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for bringing us to this place, oh God. We thank you for this opportunity to worship. We thank you for everyone that is tuned in, every household, oh God, that is tuned in to this broadcast, oh God. We pray that your power would reach them where they are, would touch them in the name of Jesus. For everyone that is ill and in their body is in need of healing, oh God, we pray for your healing virtue to flow through their bodies and for their bodies to respond by being totally and completely healed in the name of Jesus. We thank you for miracles tonight, oh God. We expect something wonderful. Lord, we expect a wonderful move of God on tonight. Welcome to the Church of the Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Set your expectations high for your blessings on this night. As our praise and worship team ushers us into the presence of the Lord. Whether happy or sad, I'll pray. Happy or sad, I'll pray. 
so let's start right now why would we wait we can praise you now in victory king of glory
your presence till you come again. Just lift your hands wherever you are. Yes, we'll sing hallelujah till you come again. Lord, and we'll dance in your presence till you come again. For you deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands in worship and I bless your holy name. Lord, you deserve the glory. Yeah. And the honor. I lift my hands in worship and I bless your holy name. For oh, you Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. And as thou hast been, thou forever will be. You gave me pardon for all 
my sins and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to share and to guide you give me strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow lift your hands and say Blessings are mine with ten thousand beside. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Because he gave me pardon for all my sins. And then he gave me a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to share and to God. And he gave me strength for. thy faithfulness. Guess what, church? Somebody tell me what time it is. It's giving time, church. Wherever you are, you ought to be all giddy and happy, full of cheer and full of joy because it's an opportunity to give into what God is doing in this church on behalf of the King. It is giving time, church. For those of you that have devices, you can give directly through your devices. It's as simple as dialing 77977, going into your text to 77977. And in the text box, put this one word, VPUMC Give. That's V-P-U-M-C-G-I-V-E. And if you send that, it will take you directly to the giving link. And you will find a drop down menu where you can give directly into Spring Revival 2021. Again, that's 77977 BPUMC Give. Let us recite our giving declaration at this time. Repeat after me I am a benevolent believer. I am a benevolent believer. 
Therefore, I am a grateful and cheerful giver. Therefore, I am a grateful and cheerful giver. I sow into this church. I sow into this church. Because I believe in the vision and ministry of this church. Because I believe in the vision and ministry. Because I am a tither. Because I am a tither. I am not a beggar or a borrower. I am not a beggar or a borrower. But a lender. But a lender. I expect the windows of heaven. I expect the windows of heaven. To pour out blessings too big for me to contain. To pour out blessings too big for me to contain. And God will rebuke the devourer for my sake. And God will rebuke the devourer for my sake. Therefore, I will share my blessings. Therefore, I will share my blessings. With my family. With my family. My neighbors. My neighbors. And the world. And the world. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for each and every gift that is being given. We are grateful, oh God, because we realize that we are only able to give because you have first given unto us. It is evidence of your gift, your benevolence on our behalf, oh God. So we pray your choice blessings upon those that are giving on this night. We pray, oh God, that you would bless this offering, that it might exceed the needs for which it has been given. Bless your people for their obedience to your word. May their debts be canceled, their covenants be full, and every single need in their life be met. This we ask in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. And all God's people said what? Amen. What did they say? Amen. One more time? Amen. Amen. Hello, beautiful people. Wherever you are in the chat, we want you to write in a quick sentence of a way God has been amazing to you. Some way where God has shown his mercy to you. Some way where you were just astonished by what God did, although you knew he could do it. Some way where he touched you, where he blessed you. As we sing this song, just type that in. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Your love for me. Your love for me. Lord, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. Your sacrifice for me. And for every blessing. For every blessing. Lord, give it on to me. Give it on to me. And for every valley. For every valley. That you used to strengthen me. I don't deserve your love, your tender mercy. If not for your grace, where would I be? And so we ask you to join us as we sing that. It's so, it's so amazing, it's so amazing. Lord, your love for me, your love for me, and it's so amazing, it's so amazing, Lord, your sacrifice for me, and for every blessing, for every blessing, Lord, give it on to me, give it on to me, and for every valley, for every valley. That you used to strengthen me. I don't deserve your love, your tender mercy. If not for your grace, where would I? I stand amazed at your glory. I stand, I stand amazed at your strength. Lord, I stand, I stand 
To God, there go I. So I say so. Oh, Lord, amazing, amazing. My life is that testimony. He's so. tonight because we have one of the premier preachers in our nation that is serving up the gospel on this night. I hope you are hungry for the word. I want to say a few things about the Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglass Haynes III. Frederick Douglass Haynes III is a prophetic pastor, passionate leader, social activist, and eloquent orator and educator engaged in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, fighting against racial injustice, committed to economic justice and empowerment in underserved communities, and touching and transforming the lives of the disenfranchised. For 37 years, Dr. Haynes has served as a visionary and innovative senior pastor of Friendship West Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. Under his leadership, the ministry and membership have grown from less than 100 members in 1983 to over 12,000. This is a preaching brother that you are about to be blessed to hear tonight. Um, it, is, it is such a wonderful thing when you have an opportunity to just sit and listen to him. He is indeed a prophetic preacher that is not afraid to speak truth to power no matter who is in power you can believe one of the voices crying out from the pulpit speaking truth to power in this nation will always be the reverend dr frederick douglas haynes the third so set yourself ready to receive from this brother on tonight we're going to have um our sermonic selection and directly after that the next voice you hear 
will be. Dr. Haynes, before we listen to our praise and worship one more time, we do want to do our church declaration, and then we're going to set them loose. Repeat after me. We declare this church, we declare this church. to be a, church, be a church, that church that welcomes the Holy Spirit enthusiastically, that welcomes the Holy Spirit enthusiastically. embraces holiness totally, embraces holiness totally. Believes, the Bible conclusively. believes the Bible conclusively, worships the Lord exclusively, worships the Lord exclusively. and loves one another exalted. Exhaustively. And loves one another exhaust. Amen. Receive the word.
my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal the land. This, of course, is the theme scripture for the Vandermeer Park United Methodist Church. And I am grateful to God for this opportunity to share with you. I especially want to appreciatively applaud uh, Pastor Kirk Lyons for his uh, laudable and liberating and creative leadership uh, determined that COVID would not cancel out the possibility of this season of renewal and revival. Of course, uh, I recognize I'm here because of the plug. Uh, my wonderful sister and friend, uh, the Reverend Dr. Keisha Agar, thank you so much, my sister, for the hookup. Uh, this is something I am indeed grateful for. I need to say thank you to my staff. They are uh, doing this on their off day. Uh, the uh, office there uh, at Vandermeer Park uh, sent me an invitation uh, and the letter says April 22nd. That's why you saw me uh, on the uh, Zoom room last night. Uh, I wasn't trying to crash, but I was being responsible and I was ready to preach and then uh, I heard Ralph West was going to preach and my assistant then told me uh, that I had to drop off because it wasn't my time. So uh, I was ready last night. Hopefully uh, it will spill over uh, into this evening. But thank you to my staff uh, for helping us through uh, on their off day. I want to call your attention, given the theme that your pastor has uh, brilliantly come up with, uh, to Psalm 30, Psalm 30. First three verses read from the New Revised Standard Version, translation of the 11th century vowed Hebrew Masoretic text. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me, O Lord. You brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. I want to put a tag on this text and for a few moments with your prayers, given the fact that your emphasis is healing, I want to talk about coming out of hell smelling like a rose, coming out of hell smelling like a rose. We are all familiar with the picturesque phrase, coming out smelling like a rose, which illustrates the idea that the person who has come out smelling like a rose, just like a rose that at once was a seed that had been planted in dirt, but somehow it uses the dirt nutrients in order to rise above what it had been in and before you know it the rose blossoms but the rose has a testimony I had to go through dirt if I was going to blossom like a rose coming out smelling like a rose is an illustrative idiom that lets all of us know that the person who has come out smelling like a rose has been through it but whatever they have been through somehow has served as transportation to what they were trying to get to and they came out smelling like a rose well I think Miguel raps about this reality when Miguel says that uh, in spite of the hell we still prevailed can you believe it we're still undefeated I like that because Miguel recognizes that hell is not simply an eschatological destination that you will go to if you die without Christ. But hell can be an existential situation that you find yourself in even if you are in Christ. Yes, Miguel says, can you believe it? We are still undefeated. He said we prevailed in spite of the hell. What is he saying? He's rapping. I've come out smelling like a rose in spite of 
and oppressive criminal justice system that is criminal and unjust. I came out smelling like a rose. Can you believe it? We are still undefeated. But not only Miguel, I think it's Jay-Z since I'm talking to New Yorkers who testified. They lined up to see the, Titan the Titanic sinking. Instead, they saw us rise like the phoenix. I love it because Jay-Z is mixing metaphors poetically. On one level, there is the ship, the sinking of the ship Titanic. The Titanic, it goes down. Jay-Z says, I've got haters who were looking forward to my demise. I parked there parenthetically because some of y'all have tuned in and you know people in your life who are looking forward to you going down. Jay-Z testifies. They lined up to see the Titanic sinking, but instead we rose from the ass just like the Phoenix, are you loving the switch in metaphors? No, the Titanic didn't sink. Instead, a resurrection occurred. It was just like the Phoenix bird of Greek mythology that crashed to the ground and burned. But out of the ashes, a new bird, a stronger, more beautiful bird arose. I love it. It's a picture of resurrection. I guess the Mexican proverb cap captures it well because the proverb says, is that they thought they had buried us. They did not know that we were seeds. Are y'all feeling that? From Miguel through Jay-Z to the Mexican proverb, all of those wonderful insights are sharing with each of us right now that in this life you can go through hell but come out smelling like a rose. That's the testimony of 32-year-old Carol Sunbaum. She testifies on Good Morning America, ABC's Good Morning America, that she was attempting, aspiring to climb the majestic Mount Hood. It was snow covered, but check out what happened. On her way up, she decides to chill and rest and she takes a seat and within moments the person who is just a few yards away from her looks over and discovers that he cannot see her. Why? Because she had fallen through what is known as a fumarole. A fumarole is the hole in the side of a volcano that emits volcanic uh, toxins and so she had fallen through the hole some 15 feet. Can you imagine that one moment she seated and the next moment she testifies it's like a chair had been snatched out from under her and now she's in a hole, a hole where there are toxins. She's in a hole wondering if the snow was going to come down on her and suffocate her to death. She's in a hole hurting. Why? Because understand this, she has dislocated her shoulder. I park there parenthetically because there's someone who is listening to me right now. I don't know you, but God has me in your Kool-Aid. I've called out your flavor because the metaphor is a message for you. You in one moment were doing well on your way up, but then all of a sudden it's as if life snatched the chair out from under you and you found yourself sinking, not just sinking, but falling and and to make matters worse, here it is, like Carol, you find yourself in pain. Watch this. She's in pain in a pit. She's hurting in a hole. That's exactly what's going down in our passage that the psalmist is poetically testifying about. The psalmist, my sisters and brothers, in a real sense, testifies, I've been to hell and back, but God gave me a round trip ticket, and I came out smelling like a rose but wait let's go back check out what the psalmist went through the psalmist number one the text lets us know is stuck in Sheol Sheol you understand Sheol Sheol was a term for a pit the place of the dead it was a term don't miss this for hell again hell not just an eschatological destination but an existential situation no one 
wonder the existentialist John Paul Sartre wrote a play and entitled it No Exit in which he postulated the profound point that you ain't got to wait to go to hell to, to die to go to hell. He said right here on earth hell is other people and that is why not only does the psalmist say I'm stuck in Sheol, I'm in pain in a pit, but I've got some foes. I've got some haters in my life. They're doing everything in their power to hijack my hopes. They're doing everything in their power to obstruct opportunity and drown my dreams. No wonder I believe it's Walter Brueggemann, the brilliant Hebrew Bible scholar who refers to this psalm as a psalm of new orientation that had come out of a, a season of disorientation. Disorientation, you get it, don't you? Disorientation is when your life is in a state of discombobulation. It's been disrupted and, and not only disrupted, but you are despairing. As a matter of fact, this is a picture, my brothers and sisters, of despair, depression. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for, depression. Let me park here parenthetically because someone has tuned in and you know what it's like to be down in the dumps, to battle the blues, to, to in a real sense deal with depression. And as a people, we know about that because we're under constant psychic attack in these yet to be United States of America to use the language of the late great Maya Angelou and that psychic attack shows up in so many where, ways where we are triggered by that which is traumatic. We just came out of uh, the trial in Minneapolis, St. Paul of that racist, evil terrorist by the name of Derek Chauvin uh, and watching repeatedly what he did to George Floyd was triggering. It was again uh, the psychic attack of what it means to be black in these disunited states of America. All of that can conspire to disorient you, to depress you. No wonder that beautiful sister who had been through the ugly experience of depression, Melissa Ford describes depression thusly when she says that depression is to find yourself in a dark prison losing your grip. I got to hang out right there because the metaphor is powerful and profound. Depression, she says, is like being in a prison. In a prison, you are handcuffed by helplessness. In a prison, you can't do what you want to do. In a prison, your dreams are locked up. In a prison, it's a jacked up situation, but hold on. Not just in a prison, she says, it's a dark prison. And someone is listening right now. You don't just feel stuck like Chuck, but to make matters worse, you feel like you're in a dark place, but not just a dark place. She says, in that dark place, you are losing your grip. What a picture, my sisters and brothers, of someone who is listening to me right now, losing your grip in a dark place where you feel handcuffed by helplessness. If that is you, please understand the psalmist speaks to those of us who know something about disorientation. We know something about being in a dark place, stuck in Sheol, going through hell. Here's what the psalmist says. You can go through hell, but come up smelling like a rose. I'm about to shout because the psalmist has a testimony that the psalmist does not confine to his own personal piety. The psalmist recognizes the African concept that says, I am because we are. And so his praise is one that is communal. He shares his testimony with the community because he wants the community to know there is no secret what God can do, what God has done for me, God can do for you. I love that. The psalmist is saying, I'm sharing my testimony and please understand I've been through hell, but I've come up smelling like a rose because God healed me and gave my life a brand new hope. Hope, according to James Baldwin, is something that we must invent every single day. I love that right there. That's what hope is. 
hope is something we invent every single day in spite of the hell, in spite of what we've been through. And we emerge just like Miguel said, in spite of the hell, we still prevail. Can you believe it? We're still undefeated. How does it work? Look at the text. The text says, and I love this piece right here, that God is good enough. Aren't you ready to shout right here? God is good enough to radically intervene. God will radically intervene. That's what the text says happens. He would not have gotten out had God not radically intervened. God has a way of showing up when we are going through. As a matter of fact, when we go through, God specializes in coming through. God says what I will do, I won't stop you from going to Sheol, but I'll get in Sheol with you and transform you and Sheol while you're in the midst of that hell. That's exactly what happened to Martin King. Martin King testifies the year is 1963 and they're in the midst of the Birmingham campaign. Good Friday, Dr. King and Ralph Abernathy had been arrested by the notorious terrorist racist himself, Bull Connor. They are taken to Birmingham jail and King says that they separate him from Abernathy and the others who are in jail. Wait, I got to get you. They have filled the jail with 400 persons. They don't have the money to bail them out. And the Birmingham campaign appears now to be stuck like Chuck in a predicament where they are handcuffed by helplessness. King is in jail. Abernathy is in jail. And it's Good Friday. Wait, I got to tell you, because King is in jail wondering how they're going to come out. He separated from everyone else in a dark, dank cell all by himself. It's like he's in a hole. But oh, God radically intervened. What did God do? Word got to John Fitzgerald Kennedy who made a phone call. And when the phone call was made, King was finally able to see his attorneys, not just see his attorneys, but they moved him to a better location and then uh, the word got to his wife that he was okay. Wait, I'm not even done because on top of that on Easter Sunday, Harry Belafonte threw a, a, a fundraiser for the Birmingham campaign. Uh, all of this was being done while King uh, was in that dark place. God went to work behind his back. God went to work on the other end of the situation. I'm about to shout, but I can't do it yet because the good news is when you find yourself in a dark place, here's what you can rejoice in, and that is that God is the only one I know who can work both ends of your situation. God can comfort you and give you peace on this hand, and then on the other hand, make a way out of no way. God has got your back and will work behind your back, radically intervening, but not just radically intervening. The text says in response to an invocation, there is a repairing that takes place. Look what the text says. The text says that God healed the psalmist and someone is listening. That is your word even right now. God is a healer. God will heal your broken heart. The old folks say that God is a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Isn't it good to know that God specializes on going in on the inside and healing us from the inside out. And when God heals you from the inside out, God will heal you because your healing is in your hope. I got to give it to you like this. My late great high school counselor and teacher, Homer Zell Davis, did some wonderful things that literally saved my life. And one time I was testifying about what she had done for me after service, a brother came up I had gone to high school with and said, I didn't know you went to Lincoln, Fred. Do you know I went to Lincoln? And at Lincoln, it was Homer Zell Davis that saved my life. I said, how? He went on to give me his testimony. I downloaded his testimony on my mental computer. I was so blown away by it. And now I want to sermonically print y'all a copy. Here is his testimony. He said, Fred, I had been in a car accident. The car exploded 
And when it exploded, my body was covered 90% in burns. I was rushed to the hospital for a moment. It was touch and go. They didn't think I would make it, but I have a praying mama and she prayed me through. And here's what happened. I, physically, I was doing better. And the doctor told my mother I was doing better physically, but I was still in ICU. Why? Because of the fact that mentally, emotionally, I was still depressed and I felt like I was not going to make it. My mama called Homazelle Davis. She came from Lincoln High School and here's what she did. She prayed with me. She read God's word to me and then she left a book and an assignment. I said, Miss Davis, what is this? She said, that's your homework. I'm expecting to come back on Monday to pick up your homework and y'all, when she left a According to my friend, Homazel Davis left the room. And when she left the room, my friend all of a sudden said that he started to feel better because it dawned on him. The only way someone gives you homework is they believe you're going to be around tomorrow to get it done. I got to give y'all time to shout right there because it dawned on me. Whatever you are going through, I'm about to give you some homework. Here's your homework. Be anxious for nothing but by everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God that passeth all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus I got some homework for you even the youth shall faint and be weary young folks shall fall but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles run and not get weary Walk and not faint. I got some homework for you. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon get cut down and wither like the green grass. I've got some homework for you. In this world you shall have tribulation. Here it is. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. God radically intervenes. God repairs those who are injured. But in the final analysis, the text says God restores us for brand new life. Do you see what the text says? He is restored by Almighty God, restored for brand new life. And that's the word I'm giving to everyone. Your healing can happen when God gives your hope, something to look forward to beyond what you're going through. And then God will restore you. I know what's going on. Y'all are wondering what happened to Carol Sunbaum. I can't leave you there leave her there I've got to let you know I told y'all during the opening illustration that Carol was sharing her testimony with good morning America that means somehow she survived and some of us listen folk don't know what we've been through but the very fact that you are tuned in right now the very fact that you are alive and well it says you survived in spite of the hell you still prevail can you believe it. You're still undefeated. Here's Carol's testimony. She said when she was down in that pit, in that hole, suffering from a dislocated shoulder, what she did not know is that someone had seen her go down. He rushes over to the hole and he begins to extend a rope and then he extends the rope and slides down the rope and he then puts Carol on his back and climbs up that rope listen she didn't have the strength but he did and he brought her back to safety and now she is healed and made whole with the testimony that when she couldn't that's when someone else could there it is I'm done and that's my word to everyone listening who is hurting in a hole to everyone listening who has been through hell but God is giving you a round trip ticket God will come where you are and comfort you in that hole, put you on God's back and bring you back up out of the situation you got yourself into or life threw you down in and you'll end up testifying with our great ancestors who sang in the old school church I love the Lord, he heard my cry and pitied every groan long as I live and troubles rise I'll hasten to his throne, you can testify with our beloved saints of old who sang I'm so glad 
said, Jesus lifted me singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. God bless you. God keep you. You can go through some hell in this life. Ah, but when you know our Savior, our Savior who went to hell himself, the text says in, when he died, he descended into the prison to hell where he delivered, the, he delivered those who were in prison into where captivity had taken them captive. He delivered them. He went to hell and back. God gave him a round trip ticket. And, and I give that to you. You can go to hell and back because the same power that raised our Lord from the dead, you have access to. You can go through hell, but come out smelling like a rose. Shall we pray? God, thank you for the good news of your word. Thank you that there's healing in your word. And right now I cover in prayer all who are struggling, suffering, even sick, and sorrow-filled. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray your blessings of healing and hope. Go ahead, radically intervene. Re repair those who have been injured and then restore and inspire them. And as you do so, may they share what you've done for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Good God Almighty. Somebody say, thank God for the preacher. Thank God. We thank God for the preacher. We thank God for the preacher. Let us pray for Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes at this time. Lord, we thank you for your servant. We thank you for the word that was burning in his spirit, oh God. We thank you for the work that he is doing. We thank you for the meal that he served us on this final night of our revival. We thank you, oh God, that we can go through hell and come out smelling like a rose. We pray for him, for every need in his life to be met. Oh God, protect him. May your ministering angels be dispatched on his behalf, protecting all those who dwell in his household. Oh God, may your joy, your comfort, and your peace be his constant companions. And may these three things never abandon him. Oh God, we pray for the work that he is doing in Dallas, Texas. Oh God, we pray that your hand will remain on your son, oh God, that you would continue to guide him, that he will always have fresh wind, that he will always have a fresh word, that he will always have fresh fire, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Blaze his path, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the midnight hour, as he toils over your word, may it be illuminated unto him, oh God, in the name of Jesus. So I pray that his oil never runs dry, never runs dry, never runs dry in the name of Jesus. We need his voice. We need his prophetic voice in this nation for such a time as this, oh God. May he always know that he is appreciated, that he is needed, oh God. Open the windows and doors of opportunity for him to speak in the places where your word needs to be spoken in the name of Jesus. Bless the ministry in Dallas. May it flourish. May it flourish. May it flourish. May it flourish. May it flourish even during a time of pandemic. May it flourish in the name of Jesus we pray and all God's people said amen amen, amen and amen. amen you too can go through hell and come out smelling like a rose sometimes people feel like they are stuck in that place called hell on earth your circumstances your life feels like one calamity after another but there is an answer. I remember years ago, we used to wear buttons that said, Christ is the answer. For everyone that we encountered, the first thing they would see was this big round button that said, Christ is the answer. What was true then is still true today. Christ is the answer. And so if that's you, and if you feel like you're going through hell, feels like you've just been parked in hell, for this part of your life and you want to be rescued, I say unto you that Christ is the answer. He was sent here so that you don't have to reside in that place called hell. The two benefits, great benefits to receiving Christ, an abundant life in this life and life eternal in the presence of the Lord. Don't you want to enjoy an abundant life in this life? 
in eternal life in the presence of the Lord? If that's you and you never prayed the prayer of salvation, I want you to just repeat after me. Simple prayer, but the most significant thing you can do for your life. Dear Lord, I thank you for the sacrifice that was made on Calvary just for me. I come to you as a sinner in need of salvation. So I accept Christ tonight as my Savior. And I give him lordship of my life for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Just like that, you can be snatched out of hell and come out smelling like a rose. If that's the first time you've prayed that prayer, we want to be in touch with you. You can just place in the comment section or you can direct message us your information because we want to hear from you. Simply because we want to put some materials in your hand and we want to walk you through the discipling process. You're not designed to go through this walk alone. It's designed for you to go in community, in fellowship with other believers. So we want to be able to reach you. Please give us your information so that we can send you some information that will help you through the next couple of weeks of your walk. As well, if you live anywhere near the Brooklyn area, we'd love for you to be a part of this fellowship so that we can be a blessing in your life and in turn allow you the space to bless this house. If you don't live in this region of Brooklyn, we still want to hear from you because we want the opportunity to refer you to a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church where you can still be nurtured in the Word of God and grow in discipleship. Amen? Well, we thank everyone for joining us for these wonderful nights for our revival. Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes concluded the matter on tonight. You can come out of hell smelling like a rose. Before we let loose our praise and worship team to sing us out, we are going to go through our uh, benediction in our traditional way. Raise that symbol of power in the air, nice and high, and repeat after me. I leave this place, I leave this place full, of power. full of power. I leave this place, I leave this place full, of full of purpose. I leave this place, leave this place in, God's presence. in God's presence. Now go in peace. You are dismissed. Amen.
Disappointment, I am here, may have some stars. 